Hi there, it's Nikki here from Happy Hormones for Life and today I am talking about organic foods and whether they're worth investing in because you know often they are more expensive and often not that available either if depending on where you are but it's often a tricky choice um, if you're health conscious between um, spending on organic the extra on organic foods and obviously in an ideal world we'd be all living uh, like the good life and buying locally grown foods having chickens in the back gardens um, and uh, and obviously living off the land but you know I'm showing my age here by mentioning the good life but it used to be one of my <laughs> my favorite programs but most of us don't have the time the energy the space um, to do all that and we might not want to either but we do want to make the right choices for our health so I'm going to talk about a couple of uh, different issues with organic food. So are they more nutritious generally? So if you look at the research, it's a bit of a mixed bag. Um, if you look at something like the Soil Association, they obviously say yes. Um, they are quoting a study done at Newcastle University in 2014, which found that organic crops are up to 60% higher in um, antioxidants than conventionally grown ones. But other studies have found uh, actually very little difference in nutrient levels between organic and non-organic. So it is a bit of a mixture. So are they actually better for your health? Well, for me, this is undoubtedly uh, yes, purely because most non-organic foods are produced using chemical pesticides. And these have unequivocally been linked to many health issues, ranging from you know, headaches and digestive issues to more chronic, serious conditions such as cancer and, of course, reproductive issues too. Now, the World Health Organization has been saying for years that although individual pesticides um, have been tested and deemed safe, it's not that, uh, you know, they're not used individually, it's the multiple exposure, it's that accumulation that has not been tested and, and that's the thing that can be harmful to health. And when they're used on uh, fruit and veg, uh, they are often transferred to animals eating the grass and the plants, so it just goes up the food chain. Pesticides are known endocrine disrupting chemicals, EDCs. If you look up, that up on Google, you will find thousands of thousands of pages of studies on these things. That means endocrine disrupting means they, they can mess with your hormones, basically. And the way they do that is they can mimic, block or alter your own hormones by landing on the receptors. And this includes estrogen, progesterone, testosterone and also thyroid. So the kind of things that, that can be disrupted are like things like fertility, uh, low sperm count, early puberty, early menopause, hormone-driven cancers, and um, impact on your thyroid, thyroid disease. And of course, if you're going through menopause, you know, our estrogen progesterone balance is absolutely crucial and uh, we don't need anything else adding to that disruption. <laughs> Um, pesticides are also, you know, may have an impact on gut health too. This is early in the research, but they're toxic by design, aren't they? So they kill insects, weeds, small animals and bugs um, that could threaten the plant. So, you know, we also have these things inside as microbes. Uh, we have a whole ecosystem of living creatures um, in our gut. And, you know, uh, I can certainly see some studies coming up that these chemicals will be affecting our gut health in the future. Well, now, but, you know, the research will be in the future. So. I've got some uh, my top 10 organic foods that I think, you know, if you can get them, um, then I think we should prioritise and I'll tell you why. The first one is meat. Well, we're, we're still in the EU at the moment um, and that means we are protected against the use of hormones in animal production. But once we're out, who knows what's going to happen? The standards in the US and other parts of the world are much lower. We've already heard about chlorinated chicken, um, arsenic um, as well, and um, you know, who knows? So organically raised animals are, they are given more space, they're allowed to graze in the open and they generally live a happier life. And one study even showed a direct link between the stress hormone levels in the meat and human health. Um, and if you want to link to that, go to the blog. Buying organic um, meat less often would be my personal choice so better quality but just have it less often the second food to prioritize is eggs similarly eating organic eggs from organic chickens eating what they're designed to eat their insects and grasses and bugs um, and not just fed on grains ensures you can get the best quality eggs without having to look after chickens in your back garden right. <laughs> good for you if you've got chickens but most of us haven't um, so pesticides are also fat soluble, so they kind of, they can make their way into the egg yolks as well. We don't really want that, do we? So eggs, important. Dairy, number three. Organic milk does seem to have a higher nutrient profile, so that's good. 
and it's coming from cows again are allowed to graze, graze freely on top of that uh, you know if you're if you're looking at conventional dairy farms the cows are fed on you know usually grains corn and soy um, that are also grown using pesticides so they're often going to show up in the products of you know, the butter and the yogurts and um, cheeses number four is fruit now particularly the soft fruits and berries um, apples berries and the soft fruits uh, pears peaches nectarines grapes cherries that kind of thing they are particularly sensitive to pesticide exposure because they don't have a tough outer skin they're very soft and and the pesticides are, they're very absorbable so just you know be wary of that when you're buying the fruit um, number five is baby food uh, I'm obviously don't need this at the moment my kids are grown up and flying the nest but if you um, know someone uh, who, who's feeding their baby babies are far more susceptible to these pesticides especially the endocrine disrupting chemicals because their their reproductive systems aren't formed yet they're still developing and we know the pesticides can disrupt child de child development um, and the neur neuron system and the brain right from um, inside the womb so it's really really important to uh, get that message out to people with babies number six is greens things like spinach kale salad leaves all of that stuff they are very delicate and they are they have a massive surface area so they're going to have more pesticides naturally on them when they're sprayed and you can't really scrub them or cook well you can cook them before eating but you know if you're eating salad you don't really want cooked salad so, and you can't scrub them either you can wash them but that doesn't remove all the pesticides so go for organic greens where you can the next one is celery it's particularly poorer celery so it's it's very absorbable so um, again it's really hard to, to wash off uh, number eight is tomatoes, one of the few fruits that has been proven to be more nutritious in organic form, um, but they are, again, very sensitive to pesticide absor absorption, so try and go for organic tomatoes. Number nine is potatoes. Even if you peel your spuds, they are likely to uh, contain pesticides, so if you do eat potatoes regularly, uh, try and buy organic where you can. And the last one is uh, the bell peppers and chilies. Uh, colourful peppers and chilies have been found to contain a high amount of pesticides. Cooking and scrubbing them obviously can help. Now this is not an exhaustive list by any means, so if you want to get more information go to the uh, Environmental Working Group website, I'll put a link under here. Much, much more information on all this stuff. They've got their clean 15, the dirty dozens, um, and you can get more information on uh, how pesticides can affect individual foods. If you can spend a bit more on these foods uh, to buy organic, I highly recommend it. And if you can't, then please don't avoid them altogether. Um, you know, just cook them or give them a good scrub to minimise any residues. Uh, I don't want you missing out on the health benefits of these lovely foods um, just because that you can't get the organic form. So, and don't forget, if you need help with your hormones or other health issues, do get in touch and we can set up a free call. Hope that was useful. I'll see you next time.